Hey everybody, this is Dave with the Bass Channel, and welcome back to a show that we are unofficially, informally calling the Big Three. And that is where we shoot out similar pedals from the Big Three manufacturers, Big Three of course being Boss, MXR, and Electro Harmonics. Today, we're looking at envelope filters, or envelope filters, or auto waz, or touch waz, or whatever you like to call them, the thing that makes your bass go wap, 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 is what we're looking at. Now, I ran through all of those different names for this kind of pedal because they're just not always apples to apples. For example, the Boss is an automatic wah or touch wah, while the MXR and the EHX are both distinctly called envelope filters. So you get a little bit of a difference in semantics and a little bit of difference in architecture, but they're generally the same sounding kind of pedal. <laughs> The Boss AW3 Dynamic Wah is a, quote, talking pedal. It's touted as the first compact wah pedal to have the human voice vowel type sounds that the humanizer mode offers. Of course, you've got your standard up and down direction filter modes, but it's also got an extra resonant sharp mode, which sounds like the filter in a synthesizer, and it's got a tempo mode. Hey, there's LFOs in here. Lots of different modes in this pedal. The M82 bass envelope filter provides classic, all analog, filtered, modulated tones to mix in with your signal, while still maintaining the integrity of your bass's earth-shaking low end, according to MXR. The M82 features dry, FX, decay, Q, and sensitivity controls to shape your enveloping characteristics. Enveloping characteristics? Either way, the sound of the pedal. And of course, it is all analog and true bypass. Now, of course, the Nano Qtron is a little bit more straightforward than the other two pedals, and it's just got regular down home straightforward controls. You got a volume knob to set how loud the thing is, you've got a drive knob to adjust the filter sweep sensitivity, and of course, how much it responds to your dynamics. You've got the Q control knob, which basically controls how sharp the peak is, it sets the bandwidth of the peak itself. And of course, you've got a three-way switching knob that changes from low pass to band pass to high pass operation. Alright, so what do we think? First of all, let's get to, we'll call it the value proposition, okay? The Boss AW3 is on the one end of the scale at $169.99, which is the highest price point, but it also has potentially the most versatility with all of the different modes. It's got two different inputs for guitar and bass. It's even got an expression pedal jack if you want to manually operate a wah. So it's got a lot of features going for it. So while the Boss is relatively easy to dial in a good sound on, some of the settings can go really, really harshly sharp. They're, they're very resonant, especially on the talking. You've got that, that 
extra kind of um, almost a pink noise kind of formant attached to the talking filters. Um, so it could be a little daunting, could be just too much to play with, um, but it's a pretty decent pedal and you can get good sounds out of it. <laughs> And, you know, even having those vocal sounds to begin with is a bonus. If you uh, remember our videos from Walktober last year, we really enjoyed, like, the Cockfight Plus because of that robot kind of humanizer, vocalizer kind of sound. This does that in a much smaller pedal. The MXR comes in the middle of the pack, price-wise, at $149.99, call it $150, why not? And it is, it's almost become the standard. It's very popular among uh, the base forums that I have uh, participated in and things like that. It is just the one kind of filter and it only goes the one direction, but you can the fact that you can blend in your bass's dry signal means you're never going to lose out on the bottom end and it is call it that filter sound you expect to hear an envelope filter you expect to hear an auto wah this will give you that sound now on the downside you can get a little bit of extra woof especially you let a note ring out and then the envelope closes it's got a big bump kind of somewhere in the 200 hertz range that really can kind of overtake your signal as the filter closes but it is a really easy pedal to get some really great sounds out of And of course, at the budget end of the spectrum, 111 bucks for the Electroharmonics Nano Qtron. $111.70. Another very specific price point. This one, I would say, is the simplest of the three to operate. You've got fewer knobs, you've got fewer things to experiment with, but it's it's kind of one of those, it's a very old school sound, right? If you know the Qtron or if you know the Mutron that the Qtron was based on, you're at least somewhat familiar with this sound. It's not as adjustable. You can't slow the filter down very much, although adjusting the drive settings uh, will help in that regard. And of course, as bass players, we're gonna probably use the low pass filter mode way more often than band pass or high pass, but is what it is. Decent pedal for a budget price. I think this one is going to be tough to pick a winner. If we've got to pick a winner, let's, um, I don't know, let's mull on it for a moment and see what we come up with. <laughs> So, 
So, uh, drum roll completed. If we had to pick a winner on this one, I think that we're split decision a little bit, and I'll tell you why. My favorite of these three is probably going to be the Qtron, uh, just because it is so very simple. I have my complaints about the Qtron sound personally. I think it can get a little too peaky and a little too uh, snappy, but I think you can work with it, and it's just kind of a classic sound. There's something raw and organic about the Qtron sound. Chris's favorite is the MXR, because, and I, I don't, I don't blame him for this. Um, because I also think it sounds awesome, but he makes a good point in that it's easy to get a really good sound specifically for bass and of course being able to dial in some of your clean bass to support the bottom end only makes it better. Um, so yeah, I think the, the boss is great for the kind of person that wants one pedal to do a hundred different things, or if you really like one or two of those modes in the AW3 that you can't get in another pedal. So in a sense, it's really hard to say, overall, boom, here's the bass channel seal of approval winner. I legitimately think all three of them are the best for a particular player. And yeah, I mean, of course, your mileage is gonna vary. Uh, you're not us, you don't have uh, our play style or our basses or, or what have you. So really, this one's a toss up. And I think it's gonna have to be up to the audience to decide. So leave a comment down below. Number one, what you thought of the tones that you heard out of those pedals in this video. And also, because this is the kind of pedal that a lot of people have had experience with. Tell us what you think of your own experiences with these pedals in the comments below. Of course, we've got to give a shout out thanking Zounds once again uh, as our affiliate partner who sent us these pedals just for this review. And uh, of course, we've got the affiliate links in the description below. If you want to check out these or anything else at Zounds, we get a tiny little bit of assistance uh, whenever you guys buy something there. Oh, and by the way, if you have not noticed, we have kind of shuttered our Patreon and moved all of that good stuff over to YouTube membership. So if you want to become a channel member, you get a couple of perks, you get a little bit more in-depth video content, and you might get some early access or of course your icons next to your names in the comments, things like that. So check that out if you want to just, even if you just want to buy us collectively one cup of coffee a month, that would be great. <laughs> So uh, again, I'm Dave with the Bass Channel and I'll catch you guys on the other side.